Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this, the and or not flexible bed kit and and or not print surface. For those that don't know, the idea of a flexible build surface is that when you're printing onto it, it's nice and flat and rigid and kind of mounted directly onto the print bed. But once you've finished printing, you can remove it from the bed and flex it in order to help get your print off. This is good because typically your print that you printed onto it, such as a lion, will be rigid. This won't flex. So in order to get it off, you either have to, well, there's not really many good ways to get it off. Most people will have used to hack at it with like something sharp, like a chisel or, but now you can just flex the build plate and you can see it just starts to come off. Of course, it wasn't really bonded, but that's the, anyway, yes. By flexing the sheet, you can get your rigid prints off much easier. The flexible bed kit comes in three parts, a stainless steel sheet, a sheet of 3M adhesive, which I've already applied to the wrong side of the third thing, the high temperature Hulbach array magnetic sheet. You can also get from them their own build plate kind of print surface, if you like, which you can stick to the top of the stainless steel sheet to have a complete kind of printing surface assembly. If you've not seen already, I did do a live stream showing you the kind of assembly process onto an Ender 3, as this is the Ender 3 kit, which really was quite easy. You just have to peel off the original surface, place the adhesive that comes with the kit onto the correct side of the magnetic sheet. It does matter a lot. And then stick that to there, and then this sticks on top. It really is a very simple process. The reason that it's important to put that sticky sheet onto the correct side is this is a Hallbark Array magnetic sheet. Hallbark Array basically means you have alternating kind of magnetic poles next to each other. So you've got north, south, north, south, north, south, all the way along. And that creates this kind of special array which makes it much more magnetic on one side than it is on the other. This is important because on one side, it's kind of not very sticky. Whereas on the other side, it's very, very strong. So yes, the assembly process is easy as long as you make sure you put the sticky thing on the right side. For the assembly process, it's useful to have a kind of squeegee thing like this, which is, well, this is a kind of car one for applying that vinyl wrap stuff that people put on cars. But it's perfectly good for doing this. So when you apply the adhesive onto the magnet or onto the bed, wherever you're putting it, then you can just kind of smooth it out using this and it makes the whole process a little bit easier. You can use something like a credit card, but I'd highly recommend getting one of these. There'll be some links in the video description. Speaking of magnets, they are strong. I mean, really strong. Like, you should probably wear gloves to protect your fingers kind of strong. At first, it did seem kind of totally overkill. And even now, I do feel it is quite overkill, especially for a printer like the Ender 3, where you're probably not going to be trying to print the most exotic and warp pro materials. But the surface itself is designed to be used with things like polycarbonate and nylon, which can warp a lot. And because the surface is obviously designed to hold those, you need to make sure that the sheet isn't going to just flex. So having very strong magnets holds your sheet down. And as long as you've got a surface that holds the material, you can kind of fight a little bit against the warping of the material that you're printing. At this point, you might be questioning why I'm talking about magnetic flexible surfaces for an Ender 3 at all. On the fact that the Ender 3 Pro actually comes with a removable magnetic surface. Well, there's one reason. And this is basically it. Magnets always have a maximum working temperature, and above that they have a Curie temperature. The maximum working temperature is the temperature at which they start to lose magnetism because of the temperature, and the Curie temperature is the temperature at which it loses all of its magnetism. The Ender 3 surface, not this one, loses its magnetism or starts to lose it around 80 degrees Celsius. So if you're wanting to print things like ABS or anything like that that requires somewhere in the region of 100 degrees C bed, you're not really going to be able to do that successfully over a period of time. However, this sheet has been tested to 120 degrees Celsius without losing any magnetism. Therefore, that pretty much opens your range of materials much wider and allows you to print pretty much any material onto this bed. There is one slight downside to this build plate kit slash system, and that is the sheet. If you've looked at other flexible plate systems, you'll quite often see the name spring steel appear. And this is a special type of steel which has a high yield strength. 
The higher yield strength means you can put in a lot of kind of force, stress or deformation into that material before it permanently deforms. Hence being quite good for a spring because you can get deformation without being permanent. However, the steel used in this sheet is stainless steel, but not spring steel. Stainless steel, this one specifically, does still have a fairly high yield strength, so you can do quite a bit of deformation without it being permanent, but it's not quite as much as spring steel. So the question is then, does this sheet deform enough in order to remove a print? And I would argue, yes, it does. Remember, the purpose, in, in my mind, for a flexible sheet is to remove large rigid prints from it without having to hack at them with anything. And if you're printing something onto a plate, pretty much any amount of flex will start to remove it from that bed. As long as you're kind of sensible with the amount that you're bending it and you're aware that it's not spring steel and it's not just going to deform a totally ludicrous amount before being permanently deformed, you're going to be fine. So that's pretty much it for the actual build plate kit. Now let's take a look at the print surface itself, the top coating, if you like. The and or not build surface is a clear, translucent, textured, flexible build surface designed to hold strongly to a number of different materials, including ABS, HIPS, PETG, ASA, polycarbonate, flexibles, wood fill, bronze fill, etc, etc, etc. Basically, most filaments that you can find on the market at the moment that are not kind of ludicrous high-end engineering materials. Just like the flexible build plate kit, the assembly or fitting is really easy. It's just 3M adhesive, peel off the corner, place it down, use the thingy, vinyl wrapper thing, and just smooth it all down. Really not a difficult process. Pretty much anyone could do it. You do need to be careful though that you don't get any bubbles under the surface, hence using a correct tool to do the job. So what's the most important part of a print surface? Holding materials down onto it. How well does this one work? I'd argue very well. In fact, in the instructions, it does suggest that your nozzle distance, so the distance between the nozzle and the bed for the first layer, is a little bit greater than normal because you will get an extraordinary amount of bonding if you're not careful. In fact, I didn't really heed those warnings for the first print. I thought, yeah, okay, it says that, but really, is it that much better? And yeah, it, it really is. So the very first print I did was this in ABS, and I printed it right here. I know that because there's still marks in the bed from where I left the nozzle far too close to the bed and I almost permanently bonded the first print to the surface. So it does stick very well, even to things like ABS, which are normally very warp prone, but just be careful, keep your nozzle distance a little bit further than normal because otherwise you're going to be sticking things to it permanently. And this is another good reason that the flexible build surface partners really well with it. I have actually used this surface before on a six millimeter thick piece of aluminium. Now, the problem with that is that I had no way to flex the aluminium, so getting the prints off was really quite difficult. So on that basis, I would suggest only getting this print surface if you have a flexible sheet in order to get it off again, because it does stick so well to prints that without that flexibility, getting stuff off can be quite difficult. One slight downside of this surface is its resilience to a hot nozzle. So for example, let's say you're leveling your bed, it's nice and hot, as is your nozzle, in order to make sure you're accounting for any thermal expansion and whatnot. You have your stepper motors engaged and you're moving the nozzle around the bed in order to do your leveling. However, you accidentally put your nozzle a little bit too close to the surface and it basically sits onto the surface. With some surfaces, this is not too much of a worry, but with this particular surface, it does tend to kind of melt it into place and you get this kind of little nozzle indentation into the bed. It's not a major, major problem, but if you do it right in the middle of the bread, it will mean you get that little, little nozzle indent on the bottom of every print. Like you can see on the bottom of, bottom of this little TPU block. One quite easy way to get around this is just to make sure that your kind of leveling gauge, probably a piece of paper, is kept between the nozzle and the bed at all times and just keep it kind of slowly moving as you probably would be for your leveling process anyway. But yes, if you do accidentally drive the nozzle into the bed, expect it to leave a bit of a mark. So finally then, let's take a look at both of these things in terms of price. You have your flexible bed kit, which is £40, and your print surface, just this alone, which is £11.50. So £51.50 for the whole set that I've got here. If you compare that to Biltac, their flex plate system, which will set you back £90, €90, Euros, or the Wham Bam system, which is $52, I think, plus your import taxes and shipping fees, it will be quite a lot more than that overall. I think this is really generally placed very well in the market in terms of its cost and performance. 
The main reason for that big price difference is going to be the steel sheet. Spring steel is quite an expensive material and stainless steel is not so much. So while the performance is maybe not quite as good, you do have to consider whether that's really necessary for what you need. I think a lot of the times you just be sensible with the amount that you're trying to flex your plate and it's really not a problem. Personally, I've not had an issue with it with all the stuff that I've printed for doing all these tests. If you do get one of these kits, I'd love to see your successes and I'm sure Andrew would too. So share with me on Twitter or Instagram. I'd love to see your results. Thank you very much to Andrew for providing the two build play kits and of course the print services to go with them. I do apologize for building this one incorrectly. It has messed up that system somewhat. But of course, links to buy these will be in the video description below. So that's pretty much it for my review on the and or not flexible build plate kit and the and or not print surface. You decide whether it's right for you, but personally I think it's a really well priced kit and it does perform excellently. Both the magnetic sheet and the print surface are really very good. And I've got little pieces of sharp metal all over my desk and it keeps hurting my hands. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, Susie, Irv, Kevin, Ian, Adam, Stephen, Gordon and Lawrence. Your support is very much appreciated. If you'd like to join them in supporting the channel, have a do, head over to my Patreon link in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for behind the scenes and other stuff like that. And I will see you in the next one.